Welcome to the Prospecting Today podcast. Today we are joined with Stephen Ross, who wrote the book you see behind him there that says, Doors Open When You Knock. And Stephen is a real estate agent out of Colorado. And how long have you been a real estate agent? This is my 17th year. Wow. And what I love, I love that book you have behind you because we're going to talk about how you built your business, but you say that's actually a metaphor. What do you mean by that? Well, so, right, I'm the worst person to be a real estate agent. And <laughs> why is that? I'm an introvert. Mm -hmm. I don't do, I don't work nights or weekends. I'm not online. I don't do anything. So in fact, I'm antisocial. Yeah. And I think a <laughs> I lot wanna... of the real estate agents would relate to that. So how did you build such a thriving business being somebody who doesn't necessarily want to seek out and talk to people? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. You just I mean, right. Because we, we have to talk to people to sell real estate for most of us. I mean, some people do it through marketing, but for most of us, we find a way to talk to people and build a relationship and then they trust us to help them right buy and sell real estate. Mm -hmm. And so I had a coach early on in the business and he said, it's just a simple business, knock on heads, knock on doors, pick one. Mm -hmm. And I thought, dude, you are smoking crack because there's no way I'm knocking on doors. Like I'm a UCLA grad. I've worked on wall street, like no way, man. Yeah. But then I real, but then I realized like, holy cow, all the things I listed that I am, I'm like, I'm going to fail if I don't figure out how to talk to people. Um, and so I thought I should try this knocking on doors thing. And that's, and that's how I started. And that's how I built my business. And I say the doors are a metaphor because most people are not going to knock on doors. Most people are going to not knock on doors, let alone 125,000 doors, which is what I've done over 17 years. And uh, so the doors are a metaphor of how you put yourself out to do the things you don't feel like doing every day. What was it like knocking on your very first door? Were you terrified? I was terrible. I was terrified. I, I you know, it's the classic story. Mm -hmm. I've got to do this. I know I should do this. I can't remember exactly. I'm sure it took me a few days to muster up the courage to figure out where I was going to go, what I was going to say. And then where right, I get in my car and I thought, well, I'll just start in the neighborhood I, I live in, but I, I'm not going to just start with my neighbors. I'll drive a couple blocks. So I literally get in my car, drive, I don't know, three, four, five, six blocks, not far, like a minute. Mm -hmm. Sit in my car for another 20 minutes before I finally get the courage to get out of my car it's a beautiful, this was when I still lived in Southern California. The weather is perfect, right? It's 70 degrees. The sun is out. It's a beautiful day. And here I am you know, doing like what I think to be the, the hardest thing ever in my entire life. I'm, I'm a grown man going to knock on someone's door and ask them about real estate. And, you know, I didn't know what to say. So I thought I should just use one of the old Mike Ferry scripts. So I finally get out of the car. I go up to the door. I knock on the door. And of course, someone, come, you know, first door, of course, someone's going to come to the first door. And this woman comes to the door and I say, hi, would you like to sell your house? She looks at me. She's like, you look like a weirdo. No. <laughs> and she shut the door. <laughs> it's like, well, that was terrible. <laughs> I was like, uh, I'm like, well, this sucks. This is not going to work. I got to find another approach. Uh, and literally, I, I got back in my car, drove the four blocks home. And I'm like, all right, well, I got to do something else. Um, but there's something else really was just another way to go to the doors. And I created like a, I don't want to go into too much detail because it's super irrelevant, but like I created a survey. I thought I would go around and, and make it easier for me to talk to people, but that really was just a crutch. It was just delaying the inevitable of learning how to talk to people at the door. Mm -hmm. And so were you able to build, cause I know that you referenced, you built pretty much a referral only business. Were you able to build that? Um, just solely by knocking doors? Pretty much. I mean, I mean, here's the best example of it. When I moved to Colorado in end of 08, so the, mar you know, the economy, the market tanking, everything's like on fire practically or underwater, you know, pick your analogy. And so I moved into a place where I knew no people and I didn't know any property, right? I'd never sold a house. You know, we have basements in Colorado. I, there's no basements in California. I've never even seen a basement. Mm -hmm. So in a business about connecting people and property, I knew neither. And I literally just started knocking. And here I am 12 and a half years later in Colorado, 
And most of, almost all of my business is repeat referral. It's very rare that I go to someone's door and they open the door and they're like, oh, I was waiting for you. I wanted to sell my house. Like that almost never happens. It's all people. <laughs> it's all people I've built relationships with. And so how long did it take you to knock doors before you were able to build a referral only business? Well, this is kind of the, you know, when you go back and you think about lessons learned, it, part of it was the timing, right? So I moved. So really I started the beginning of 09. So 09 in, in Colorado. And because I'll skip California because it was so long ago and, and I don't sell there anymore. So in Colorado, right, 09, 10, terrible, right? It was survival. Like it was just the, please, dear real estate, God, can I live to see another day? Just let me sell one more home. And then by 2011, right, the sun, the skies started to part and there was a little light at the end of the tunnel. And I, and, uh, and I started about 2011, 2012, I started walking, working, sorry, walking and working a couple neighborhoods, but I was only going there once a year. I was still going so many places. And it took me really till about 2014. And I realized, hey, wait a minute. I, now that the it's a more of a normal market, I probably should start to focus on a couple of neighborhoods and see the same people, right, over and over again yeah. so that I can build a relationship. So it took me a while to catch on uh, because I was just in still this like survival mode. Uh, and so I would say once that happened, it probably took you know, maybe another year or two. I mean, I, I think the way to look at it is, and there's a bunch of data, I, I'm not going to quote it correctly, but if you go and look, there's some data that says you have to touch people five times, seven times, whatever the number is before they feel like they know, like, and trust you. Mm -hmm. And that was, at, you know, I would say certainly by four, five, six times, you get to someone's door, they think they've you've been there for years. They think you've been there for years and they now all of a sudden they know you. And so now you have a relationship. Uh, so it, I'd say two years, one to two years. I, I tell two, I tell people two years is what I would say. Yeah, of just knocking, and all of a sudden you built enough relationships that people just referred you business. Yeah, and by the way, right, I still kept going to the doors because, again, remember, I don't want to pick up the phone, I don't want to do parties, I don't want to do social events, I don't. So you still have to talk to them. And to me, knocking on the door was the. E Great. I'll work, you know, from 11 to two, I go to the doors, I go, I see you. And then, you know, I'm done. I don't, I don't want to talk to anyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that did it. That's what does it. Yeah. But I was willing to do that. That's the difference. Why in person? Like why the door knocking over talking on the phone? I don't know. I don't like the phone. I mean, I do it now. Cause I, I, you know, I've obviously made myself do it, but I just felt, um, being in person, there's something great about being in person with someone. And, you know, the other benefit to door knocking is if you're selling real estate, you can know the market better than anybody. When you're out walking and talking to people about why they live there, where they move from, what's on their mind, if they were to move in the future, where would they go? Why there? All those questions you know, when you're out talking to people in their neighborhood. And I think people, it's just harder to, harder to hang up on someone when you're at their front door. And if you're okay. smiling and you're generous and you're giving and you're there to serve, uh, you'd be surprised how many people are open to that. It doesn't have to be everyone, but you know, there is a, a large percentage. So you went from working on Wall Street to being a real estate agent. Why that jump? Why real estate? Well, actually, so in between there, so I worked in consulting on Wall Street, and then I left to go do a medical startup. And I was a chief technology officer. Mm -hmm. As we were selling that at the end of 04, the market was hot, especially in Southern California, and it looked like anybody could sell real estate, right? If you looked around, you're like, these people are not so bright, and they are making a fortune. <laughs> it was the order-taking days. Mm -hmm. No offense to, but it just, you know, it seemed so easy. It's the mm -hmm. lull, or it's the, that lulls you in. And so I wanted to, I didn't want to travel. I didn't want to commute. I didn't want to work 15 hour days. I didn't want to be on email all day. So I thought, well, I, you know, I'm a pretty smart guy. I can try, I can try this real estate thing. And of course we all know 
it's way harder than it looks. Yeah. What did you think was the toughest part? Is it just sticking to a routine day after day and sticking through the monotony until you find the success? Or what is it that's so tough about it? I think, well, that's a great question. There's two things that are tough, I think. Well, there's many things that are tough about real estate, but the two things that immediately come to my mind is, uh, the first is there is nothing glamorous about lead generation. I don't care how you do it. You know, I have a very good friend still in LA. He lead generates by doing open house. He does do some marketing and then he sits at a, at a local, I hate to say bar, but it's like the local bar restaurant in this small community. And he's complains every time I talk to him that he has to sit there. It's like, oh, I got to go to, I'm not going to say the name of the place, but, and I'm like, shush, <laughs> I'm like you do a lot of business because you sit there and you say hi to everybody. That's how you, right. that's how you do it. So no one feels like doing it. And two, they expect immediate results. When no one has, very few people have patience to persevere and let the things uh, you know, grow and mature. Everyone wants it yesterday. Yeah, no, it's very true. And so what would you say would be your best advice to give to a newbie real estate agent that needs to build a business, but maybe in the same boat as you, they don't necessarily consider themselves an outgoing people person? I mean, that's a tough question because you really have to decide why are you going to su succeed? Like, why are you going to do this? You know, my why was not very noble, but it was very clear, right? I had three kids to feed and I was not going back to consulting or IT or any, I, I just wasn't doing any of that. So I had to make this work. And then the second thing is, if you're newer, it's certainly more helpful to, um, it's great if you have some savings. <laughs> If you do not have to make money tomorrow, because this is a business and sure, there's always people who get in and they hit it, you know, right off the head. You know, that wasn't me. That's not most people. And so most people need to plan for it taking some time. And I think the tendency is to look around like, well, you know, everyone's killing it except for me. And then they don't realize that, no, that's just a facade. Like it really takes time. So it's the, you know, being clear why you're here and that uh, having some patience to let just, it, that's going, it goes back to patience. You just got to give it some time. And you also have to be a pretty hard worker. So what type of follow-up system are you using once you would make the connection? You've got to have some kind of system in place, a drip campaign or some kind of system in place to not lose these contacts you're making. So explain to people what your system is for follow-up. All right. So what I'm about to say is not the right answer. Just forewarning <laughs> everybody. Okay. Here was my answer. I never followed up ever. So you never created a database? Never. Is it because you didn't think to do that or? <clears throat> now I said eventually I did. And eventually I started putting people in there because I started, you know, at the, in the beginning, I was just like, look, we're doing, you know, if there's no immediate opportunity to do business, I'm on, you know, I'm on to the next person. And I'm all, and when I'm, if there is, I'm trying to leave it so that they need to call me. I don't want to have to call them. Now, as if you want to build a repeat and referral business, then you've got to have a CRM and you've got to stay in flow with people. And, it, you know, you've got to do those things. And again, it just took me a lot longer in the beginning because, it was still a lot of the survival. And when I finally realized, you know, everything was going to be okay. It's like, Oh wait, I better do some, do some things. And so here's, but when I did do that, eventually I didn't put everybody in there. You know, this is what, you know, just cause you meet someone at an open house, just cause you meet someone at the door, just cause you meet someone at your kid's soccer game, just cause you meet someone at a restaurant that night doesn't necessarily mean they should go into your database. In other words, all people, this isn't just my opinion, all people are not created equal because people are nice and yes, we got along, but are they really going to be a candidate to use you when they go to do business? People know lots of realtors. 
And what I, what I absolutely learned at the doors, having talked to thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people is people can be nice at the door. It doesn't mean that they want you to be their realtor and, and learning who those people are, who want, you know, will do business with you, will refer you. If you clog them up with everybody, it's just a mess because it becomes overwhelming and then you'll never follow up with anyone unless you're like unbelievably disciplined or organized, which is not most of us. Mm -hmm. That was a long answer to your question. No, no, it works for you. So if you had it to do all over again, what would you do differently to reach success faster that you could advise younger agents? I would have focused on those A and B people. <clears throat> so to me, an A, they are your, you know, everyone has A's and usually it's five to 10% of your database. It's not a ton of people, mm -hmm. but those people love you or have gone to their way to refer you. Like it's not, I mean, they're your raving fans, hands down, mm -hmm. not even a question. And then you have a much, you have the next group or, and you can label them any way you want. I call them A, B, and C. B's who know you, like you, most, almost definitely will use you. Probably, probably not going to go out of the way to refer you, but they may. And, and then you have C's and D's, which don't really matter how I categorize them. But had I focused on the A's and B's sooner, you know, categorize them and focus on them sooner, I would have been way better off. I just kept thinking everyone was, in, everyone was equal and they are not equal. I should not be treating someone I've met two times but barely remembers my name when I come by versus the same who's an A, who's a raving fan. They're, they're just not created equal. Yeah, no, makes sense. So where do your lead gen generation dollars go now? Do you sp spend any Zero. money? Oh, sorry, that's not true. I, that's not true. I, I don't spend money on people I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I only spend money on people who I know. And how uh, are you? How are you spending your lead generation dollars? It's not a lot, but it, the only money I spend is on mail. And so I send, send this is going to be riveting. <laughs> I send just, just listed, just sold to my people. And then I send two types. And, you know, if I take 10 listings, you know, if I sell 20 homes, usually it's 50, 50, 10 listings ish and more. So that's 20 postcards. Um, and then that's, um, and then I send two types of letters three or four times a year because I like to write. I write uh, uh, um, an economic update on the market once a quarter. And then I send a personal letter usually three times a year. And that letter is like the thing that keeps me in business. That personal letter is my money maker. Okay, so it's because of the information you contain in that letter that people find very valuable. So with that- Well, it's, that, it, yeah, it's not even, it's, it has nothing to do with real estate. It's just a personal letter. It's like, Kimberly, if you and I were friends, um, you know, we, we've just met, but you know, if we were, we long-term relationship and we hadn't seen each other in a while and you get my letter, it's gonna be like we were having a coffee date and I give you an update on what's going on with Stephen, but okay. not in a look at me way. It's, it's much more heartfelt and it's much more personal and it's much more relatable. And so people feel like I'm there talking to them and it literally replaces when I'm not at the door or on the phone with them. Okay. And so what do you think of the market that's happening right now? Like what's your advice to real estate agents in this low inventory market or what, what does this market feel like or look like to you? To me, it feels like 1999 and 2006 combined. Mm -hmm. You know, in my, to me, it sure feels like there's a big explosion coming. Yeah. And I don't know when or how or what, but it, that's what it feels like to me. And it doesn't really matter what the market does because we have to help our clients buy and sell. And so the, what works is connecting to people. What works is staying in communication with your clients. That's what works and not to convince them of anything or make them, you know, we're not trying to get them to do anything, but to really be there for them and serve them. Obviously we have to stay up to date on what's happening, 
-hmm. So my advice is just while the market's good and if you are, you know, maybe not a brand new agent, but newer, you know, certainly now is the time to just, uh, I hate to say it this way, but it's a gift, the market we have in a way, even though I don't like it, right? It, it, it is a gift in a way because Mark, the market's hot, prices are up. Let's see, it's, if you're listing property, it's a great market. Mm-hmm. So just know it doesn't always, it's not always this way. <laughs> yeah. And so when it comes to finding the doors you want to knock on, are you geo farming or how are you finding the neighborhoods? Are you just randomly selecting? Or are you using technology to find the neighborhoods you want to go to? I don't use technology to find the neighborhoods. And, you know, it depends what your objective is, right? There's three reasons to knock on a door. One, uh, you are promoting a just listed, just sold or open house. So that'd be one reason. Second reason is because you're farming that neighborhood, which is what I do. Or the third reason is you have a buyer need for that neighborhood. And the, the, the latter two, I won't give you the middle finger. So (laughs) the two ends, it doesn't, you know, it's dependent on where your buyer's looking or where you just listed property. But the middle one is if you're going to pick a neighborhood, my advice is always this. It takes time. To, to get to be known in a neighborhood, it will not happen overnight. Right. And therefore, to really reap the benefits of all the work you're going to put in, you've got to be there five, 10 plus years, which means do you want to be with those people in those houses for the next decade or two? Mm-hmm. And if the answer is no, then it's the wrong neighborhood. <laughs> it doesn't matter what the technology says. If you don't like the people or the neighborhood or the houses, don't knock there. Yeah. So what's the best piece of advice you have in the book behind you there that you wrote? Uh, The best piece of advice is to, uh, I mean, I, I hate to keep repeating it, but it really is, it really is the essence. It's just, to have some patience, like whatever you, well, I guess the first part is be clear on what you want and then be willing to give it time to happen. And I just see so many people, right? I knocked on doors for a week and nothing happened. No kidding. I mean, it was one week. That's not how it works or a month. I mean, it takes time. And if people could just give themselves some grace and realize that the, there is nowhere to get to. So what? You sold 50 homes in the first year. Big deal. Like, who cares? Like, at the end of the year, you sold 50 homes. Great. Now what? What was the year like? You know, was the year uh, uh, just overwhelming and just a rat race? Or did you have fun along the way? And I'm more up for having fun along the way. Again, nothing wrong with selling 50 homes. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is people are so focused on a goal, they forget Right. On January 1, whatever you sold last year, doesn't matter. You got to do it all over again. So you might as well have a journey that you enjoy being on. And that's really what I would say. So if a newbie agent walked up to you right now in today's market, would you advise them to stay in real estate? And would you say that door knocking in a low inventory market is beneficial? 100% on the latter. Like, abs- and besides, more people are home now. Even though people are going back to work, there's still more people home than there ever has been, at least as long as I've been knocking on doors. So, yes, I mean, I guess if you live in like a rural area, that won't work. But if you live in a suburb, 100 percent. And then the answer to your first question was, I mean, there's a lot of us that made it through 08, 09, 10. You know, so even if there's a down market coming and you know, I don't know for sure. So what? I mean, if you're in it to win it, is that the Randy Jackson line, right? If you're in it to win it, who cares what the market does? But I think like the Stoic philosophers, they were always prepared for bad stuff to happen. So if the market turns bad, all right, yeah, well, so what? (laughs) Just move on. Like, and if you can take that approach, it doesn't really matter what the market's doing. Okay, great. Anything else you'd like to add as we wrap up? I would just say this, Kimberly, 
Doors don't open themselves. They only open when you knock. I like it. I like the metaphor. How can people find you and find your book? Doorsopenwhenyouknock.com. www.doorsopenwhenyouknock.com. Okay, great. And I'll also put that in the show notes. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Hello, I'm Kimberly Houck, the Managing Editor for Prospecting Today. If you're a real estate agent who wants to learn from the experts how to build a sustainable business, well then make sure you subscribe to the Prospecting Today YouTube channel.